Hello students, welcome to the last chapter of this course uh, in which we are actually going to talk about uh, the origin of our um, own species, what's the story there, what we know, what is what we know and um, what is the evidence that we have. Um, so first of all, uh, we classify ourselves in the order primates, remember the hierarchy of classification order is pretty close to species you should know what's in here after order uh, but comes after class so it's pretty narrow um, group uh, the group of primates and we're going to talk about what are the major major characteristics of primates which are already listed here um, primates typically have large brains and when we talk about larger brain remember we um, don't talk about something um, <clears throat> in a, an absolute concept here we talk about the ratio between the size of the brain and the size of the body okay remember that's important large eyes binocular vision grasping hands these are the major some of the major characteristics of all primates um and um primates are of course mammals we are in the class mammalia okay uh and um initially these primates are adapted for tree dwelling last lifestyle uh who does primates include uh, these are all the groups that are included in the order primates from lemurs and uh, lorises to tarsiers and then there are the monkeys and the apes we are in this group with the apes and we'll see um, what are the actual living uh, groups of apes um, and so they are listed here okay as well um, and so here uh, to give you an idea of the time scale and the uh, uh, branching here remember the node and the branching that we talked about when we um, talk about uh, phylogenetic trees okay and um, we can zoom in this one a little bit more and we will later to understand who are the closest um, relatives to humans in terms of apes okay and you already know uh, you should know very well uh, the closest um, group to humans has been determined is chimp okay all right so um the earliest primates first appeared about 55 million years ago remember there is one event that um, has allowed for um, for the expansion and radiation of mammals you should remember that uh, very well and it's the extinction of big reptiles which happened about 65 million years ago this massive huge event that um, we think it was a, an impact of a big meteorite on earth and um, it caused lots of climatic changes after that it took about um, 10 million years to um, uh, for, 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 mom, for, for primates to um, evolve. Well, it takes a long time and remember also uh, Earth wasn't immediately uh, a, a good place after the impact of the meteorite it was there were um, unfavorable conditions for a long time uh, Earth was not a very hospitable place. <coughs> Excuse me. So there are two distinct characteristics that evolved in the primates that make us classify them as such. Uh, first, the primates developed grasping hands or feet with opposable thumb. Okay, this is a characteristic that you find in all primates, and that opposable thumb allows for a lot of um, fine regulation, if you will, of objects. The second was the binocular vision. Um, and uh, this evolved uh, as the primate eyes were shifted towards the front. If you look at animals, they have um, eyes more on the side of, the, of their um, head. And this uh, allows for um, the visual fields from both eyes to overlap. 
and uh, that overlap, that uh, zone of overlap uh, becomes a zone of um, perception of depth, okay? Um, and we call that stereoscopic vision, okay, or binocular vision. Um, other, um, other primate facts include um, the switch from a nocturnal uh, lifestyle to a diurnal lifestyle. Remember that generally speaking, mammals, when they appear, they were nocturnal creatures. They didn't have a chance to come out because there were the big predators out there. It took a long time uh, for mammals to finally switch to a diurnal lifestyle. And um, so remember from 55, about 55 million years ago, it took millions of years for primates to uh, switch from that kind of lifestyle that was reminiscent of, of a life uh, in uh, hiding. Um, so, the um, I, I told you about the evolution from the uh, first group, the initial groups to the um, monkeys. Um, and uh, the fact that there was a switch from nocturnal to diurnal light, uh, this also uh, came in parallel with the uh, um, improvements on the um, eye and eventually development of uh, color vision. And this is really an important feature. Again, uh, allows for um, uh, finding better sources of food, or escaping from predators better because um, a color vision is much better than a vision in black and white. And the color vision also is uh, comes, um, it gives uh, the opportunity, or let's say that color vision demands uh, a, a larger brain. So all these um, characteristics, all these features, they contributed to um, the development of a larger brain. Okay. All right. So uh, the first group I want to talk about is the group of the prosimians. Prosimian in Latin means before monkeys. Simia in Latin is monkey, pro before. So these are a, gr a group. This is a group that comes before monkeys. And um, probably to you, the, the <clears throat> most familiar of these is the lemurs, that's fine, uh, but also tarsiers and lorises are um, in this group. These are animals that you can't really tell where you would classify them, okay? These are all primates, okay? They are the first primates. They come before monkeys. They are the, they are the, group, the um, group that we come from, in, in, of course, ultimately. And um, only a few uh, prosimians are um, surviving today, are still um, uh, extant, we say, and they're all, uh, pretty much uh, most of them are confined in the island of Madagascar. Remember, we talked about um, uh, new die-offs, we talked about the fact that because of human activity, we are losing lots of species of lemurs. This is really catastrophic because uh, really, um, we don't have very many uh, prosimians, primates um, already living, okay? So they are uh, pretty much, um, <clears throat> most of them found in the island of Madagascar, which is an island of great, uh, great diversity. Um, so um, regarding the monkeys, we can divide them in two groups, the new world monkeys and the old world monkeys. And uh, you should know what um, pretty much you know, new and the old world um, is. And in case you um, don't know or you don't remember, this is the old world. Basically, Africa and Europe is considered, uh, Asia as well is considered the old world, while the new world is all depicted here. Yeah, so uh, pretty much the Americas are uh, considered the new world. And um, there are differences between these two groups of monkeys. I'm not going to go in too much into the details of all this. So the next group that I want to focus on is the group of apes, which is really the group uh, that is more um, related to us. So apes appeared about 25 million years ago. 
And uh, these apes um, had larger brains than monkeys and uh, lost their tail. So two important characteristics. Um, apes are found in Africa and in Asia. Uh, and there is no ape or ape fossil that has been found so far uh, in uh, America, North or South America as well. Uh, gibbons are uh, apes, but they are recognized as the lesser as lesser apes, and then there are the great apes. Um, lesser because they're smaller. They also have a um, less social, um, complex social behavior, um, and a few anatomical characteristics that are different from um, from the great apes. And then you have the uh, great apes, and there are four groups of uh, great uh, living groups of great apes, and these are orangutan, gorillas, chimps, and human. Um, Homo, Homo sapiens, is the only living uh, group, uh, living uh, species, really. Okay. So, um, if you don't mind, um, trying to remember for me this, okay the living groups of great apes, orangutan, gorilla, chimps, and homo, human. These are the great apes. Now, just to give you a better uh, overview of what we are talking about, okay? So we are in the order primates, we already established that, uh, which includes uh, the prosimians that we talked about here, um, the monkeys, the, the new world monkey, the old world monkeys. And then we have uh, the apes, the lesser apes, the greater apes. And um, here are the groups of the greater apes that are uh, still living. Uh, chimp, gorilla, orangutan, and homo. Now, um, the group of the, uh, here, the group of the, if you will, uh, great apes, is also known as hominidae, and this is a term that you have to try to um, familiarize with. Hominidae is this whole group. So I can say um, I'm an, omini, an hominidus, if you will, and um, so, because remember this is plural, um, so homo, uh, all the homo species, we're going to talk about some homo species that have existed, Homo sapiens sapiens is the species that is still living and is us, of course, but there are other homo species that we can recognize we're going to talk about. And very related species as well. They're not quite homo. Uh, uh, homo it will be the genus, right? Uh, but uh, they're very, very similar. We're going to talk about this. Um, now, when we talk about this species, uh, mm, genera, okay, these are genera, we talk about um, really a subfamily here of, um, generally speaking, homininae, okay, so there is hominidae and homininae, and homininae is a smaller group, a more narrow group, okay, which includes homo and other species that are very close to homo, or we'll see they are uh, bipedal, uh, as well, and um, they're very common characteristics to Homo. We're gonna we're gonna talk about those. So don't confuse hominidae and hominini. Hominidae is a big group that includes even chimps, gorilla, orangutan. It's not wrong to say that you are an hominidae, but uh, it would be wrong to say that an orangutan gorilla is an hominini. Okay, hominidus. Sorry, it's a singular. So I'm um, trying to kind of visualize this uh, classification. It can be a little bit confusing because the two terms are very uh, similar. Okay. Um, so uh, this is the visualization. Uh, let's move on. So um, remember that, um, as I told you, these are different genera. And actually one, two three, four, five, you can already tell that there are pretty much five genera that we recognize. They're not all indicated here with their names, but I will um, show you the names um, that uh, we recognize nowadays of omini which is really a subfamily, if you will. 
uh, because it includes many genera. So, <coughs> excuse me. So we talk about gen, uh, genus uh, Homo. Um, remember that um, chimps is the chimp is the most uh, closely related group to Homo, and we uh, have learned this before, and we know how we have learned this. Um, remember uh, through genetic analysis, and you should remember that at least for me, that there are specific sequences that we looked at. They are not real genes that we looked at in order to kind of understand uh, these um, phylogenesis, because for a long time we didn't know. Remember, there is a lot of similarity, um, more than 90% similarity between overall the DNA of uh, chimps, gorillas, and humans. So we had to zoom in specific sequences, and we found it useful to use these ALU elements. If you don't remember the ALU elements, go review them. These are ancient, probably ancient viruses that have invaded the genome of um, a, an ancestor of um, both a gorilla, um, chimps, and humans, and stayed in, um, in the genome, became inactive at some point, and now is part of a uh, junk, as we call it, of uh, that's present in our DNA. Um, so thanks to these ALU elements, we know that chimps um, are, in fact, the closest gr uh, relative group to HOMO. Now, the split, the timing of the split uh, between chimps um, and uh, HOMO, human, we don't know it exactly. We think it's about 7 million years ago. I am going to ask you to possibly remember this number for me, okay? About 7 million years ago. In this lecture, I'm going to ask you to remember a couple of numbers. This is one of it. And then um, there is another one that I'm going to ask you to remember, just because, you know, this is really something that uh, relates to us directly. So, kind of have an idea of a timing. We talk about million years ago, uh, 7, around 7, six to seven million years ago, um, time was split from chimp to homo. All right, so um, now let's talk about the subfamily homininae. Remember, subfamily homininae is in the family hominidae. So the subfamily homininae, remember, is the subfamily that includes this genera, uh, in, uh, including homo, and uh, they're all very um, similar, okay? They're like um, uh, almost homo, but not quite homo, okay, uh, creatures. And these are the five genera. There were uh, some of them, uh, the name was indicated in the phylogenetic tree that I showed you just uh, a little bit earlier, but not all of them. So let's name them Ardipithecus, Australopithecus, Paranthropus, Kenyanthropus, and Homo. Now, I'm not going to ask you to remember all these names, okay? I know they are very um, hard, except for Australopithecus, okay? Because this is one of the first that we found and uh, was very famous. Uh, I don't know how many of you have heard about Lucy. Actually, we did talk about Lucy. In the beginning, I showed you a video where we're talking about the fossil formation of how Lucy may have preserved. Remember, she fell in water. Remember, um, um, fossils form in water much more um, 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 probabilistically than uh, on land. And that's what um, allowed for the fossil of this Australopithecus to preserve. We're going to talk about Lucy in a minute again. So, um, Remember, so I want you to remember there are five genera of homininae, which is a subfamily of hominidae, which includes uh, not only uh, um, homo and all the rel uh, related genera, but also the great apes, basically. Let's take a look at that uh, diagram again. There are many diagrams out there. I always try to find the one that is more clear. Uh, less confusing. Okay, I found this one, I modified a little bit in order to uh, try to give you a visual representation of what we are talking about. So we are in a primate, we are focusing on hominidae, which is all this group, a family, 
uh, which includes the great apes and uh, all the hominini, which is Homo plus the related genera. Homo is a genus, all other, the other four are also genera. Here there is Australopithecus and Ardipithecus that are named, but uh, there are five branches here. All right, so um, five genera of hominini, and um, that's, that's something you have to remember, that there are five that we recognize nowadays. I'm not going to ask you to remember all these names except for Homo and Australopithecus, okay? All right, what are the hominini characteristics? All hominini are bipedal. They walk on two legs and have larger brain than non-human apes. Again, we talk about brain size, we relate it to the body size. So bipedalism is a very important, super important feature for brain development. And um, it doesn't seem like so much related, right? Why, why, why would bipedalism allow for a larger brain development or more brain functionality. Well, um, listen carefully. Um, an upright um, a way of um, walking and, and, and living uh, determines a lot of uh, skeletal changes. And these lots of skeletal changes um, Determine a, have determined a reduction in the a size of um, and the area here in which internal organs are uh, housed, and especially the area where uh, the intestine is housed. Now, intestine, um, you know, digestion and intestine takes a lot of our energy, believe it or not, and so. Uh, if you have a large intestine, so an animal with a large intestine, you're using a lot of your energy uh, for digestion of food. You need more food and you need more energy for digestion of food. Now, if you undergo a change to where uh, your digestive system reduces in size, this means you have more energy to spare for a larger brain. And larger and, and more brain functionality. So the two things are extremely related. So bipedalism, um, it, it changed the body so much, so much so that um, now you um, now uh, these organisms have more energy to spare for brain development. Bipedalism evolved about uh, four um, million years ago, we think. Okay, and. Um, uh, so remember this important concept. So as I told you, nowadays we um, we uh, recognize five different genera of hominins or hominini in Latin. You can you can um, even put an S there. You know we do that all the time um, when we talk about animalia. We can say animals, hominini. We can say hominins. I know it's a little confusing sometimes. Um, and so, uh, as I told you, you don't have to remember all these f names, but you do have to remember that we recognize five genera of omini or ominins nowadays. Um, so to just give you an idea, okay, don't get scared that this is just, I'm just trying to give you a picture here. Every genus, okay, genus homo, genus australopithecus here, and the other uh, uh, paranthropus, they all include many species. So genus Homo, which is where we belong, right? There is Homo sapiens, but there are many other Homo species that we have um, identified, identified, and we are going to talk about some of them uh, today, pretty soon here. Um, and um, these are the ones that we have found so far. And many times, uh, so regarding regarding homini, uh, hominini evolution, hominidae evolution, homo sapiens evolution, uh, this is an ongoing uh, process of understanding and the, the, the fossil evidence is very, very limited. And um, because of that, uh, it's in constant revision. If tomorrow we find another fossil, 
uh, then we may have to add a species here, okay? So um, this uh, um, history of human evolution is in constant revision and many times it changes. In fact, until a few years ago, we only recognized two genera, okay? Not five. Now we have increased the number of genera. It could increase in a few years from now. We find many more fossils for some reason, fossil evidence. So um, these five different genera that we recognize nowadays, they used to be only two, Australopithecus and Homo. Then we have added many more, three more. Um, so that's why I'm telling you Australopithecus is the one that is more known and I would like you to remember at least this genus for me. Okay, very similar to Homo, is our uncle. Uh, and then, um, of course, Homo of these five gen uh, different genera. I also want you to be acquainted with the idea that this uh, hominid evolution uh, a concept is in constant revision. So much so that maybe in a few years from now, what I'm presenting today, it may not be true anymore, okay? All right, so let's move on. Um, and as I told you, uh, bipedalism caused so many changes in the skeletal muscle and nervous system um, and, um, because these were necessary to work on two legs and uh, bipedalism probably evolved four million years ago. All right, so um, regarding human evolution hypothesis, um, uh, this is a very simplistic representation of human evolution. There is a lot of missing um, uh, evidence here. Um, this is what has been recognized for a long time. Is uh, There are, um, again, many more fossils that should be represented here in between. <coughs> Excuse me. And... Um, <clears throat> This is what was, um, again, recognized at some point with just two genera. Here there is a Australopithecus afarensis here, Australopithecus, and then Homo. This is what at some point, at one time, we thought we, we, we would recognize just two genera. We know that there are three more genera that have to be added here. But for simplicity, we are just going to, uh, today, we're just going to talk about this progression. But remember, this is not the true progression. There is a lot more, okay, <clears throat> that comes here. Uh, so keep your mind open. And if you, in, in the future, you take a more in-depth um, course just dedicated maybe to human evolution, you'll learn a lot more uh, than this, okay? So we're going to now talk about this particular uh, species, okay, and their characteristics <clears throat> in this progression. Okay, so Australopithecus um, is the one of the earliest uh, hominini um, genus, okay. This is uh, Africanus, is one of the species, and most of the time the name of the species is, the species is assigned uh, from the place where these fossils have been found, at, uh, with some exceptions. Um, and uh, remember, there are at least five species of Australopithecus known. Another one, um, a very um, uh, known, sorry, I'm gonna just jump to the next slide and then I'll go back. It's Lucy. Lucy was discovered in Africa in 1974, and um, especially, uh, specifically in Ethiopia. Okay, this is very famous um, because, um, again, this was another fossil evidence that is unique uh, of another species, okay, Aster Australopithecus afarensis. The previous one was Africanus, so it's a different species, okay. This, uh, was a big uh, finding because it opened up uh, the idea of uh, more a uh, tweet than what um, it was believed to be, uh, of course, at that time. This was named Lucy. Uh, not sure why, must have um, to do with the name of a wife or the person or one of the scientists involved in 
paleontologists involved in the discovery. But anyways, the scientific name is Australopithecus afarensis. So this group, okay, um, is the oldest, um, the, the oldest of, it, uh, of uh, these fossils is about, um, dated about far, uh, 4 million years ago. And uh, um, Australopithecus lived about a couple of million years from four to two million years ago. And then it went extinct. Now, their brain capacity was about a third of the size of Homo. And you will see that in the progression that we look at, the brain size, which is not an absolute brain size, remember it's related to the body size, um, it increases, okay? It increases um, up to Homo sapiens. Okay, so Australopithecus is the only ge other genus other than Homo that I'm going to ask you to remember <clears throat> about the name. And remember, at some point, uh, we, all, we thought that there were only two genera, really. We classified uh, these uh, hominina in only two genera, Australopithecus and Homo. If you were to take this course at that time, there was going to be more than that um, to remember. Uh, but as I told you, I'm not going to ask you to remember the names uh, of the other genera, but I'm going to ask you to remember that there are five recognized today's, today and the name of uh, the most known one, which is Australopithecus. Okay. And so uh, the, the main characteristics of Australopithecus, we know, we, we know for sure it worked upright. So Lomin and I work upright, brain size about a third of Homo, okay? This is one of the most um, known <clears throat> of these uh, fossils. Uh, see, so this is just to uh, show you, this is an article came out in 2009 that shows that uh, there was another fossil that was uh, found, it says before Lucy, there was Ardi. Um, and again, as I told you, um, there is a lot of ongoing um, research and, and more as we find more uh, fossil evidence, we have to revise our understanding of hominid evolution. So we know that RD may have, a, um, there, there was somebody before Lucy, we say, because uh, Lucy, which is Australopithecus, which is the first group of hominini that we recognize, they really worked upright and had many of the uh, very common features to Homo. Now we know that maybe there was somebody before Lucy, somebody else, we call it Ardi, okay? And so uh, there have been more uh, discoveries, usually this kind of discoveries, fossil um, evidence, uh, is even talked about in the news because it's a big deal, right? It, re it regards our uh, ancestry. So uh, now we're going to go uh, in the Homo uh, genus. And remember that diagram, I'm going to re uh, revisit it, uh, from Australopithecus to all the groups of Homo, uh, of the species we can say right now. Uh, let me go back to it, okay? We talked about Australopithecus. Here is the afarensis that is represented, but we know there are more species to it. This is Lucy, right? Um, and um, now we're going to talk about the species of Homo that we have um, fossil record of. Of course, we all base our knowledge on evidence, on fossil evidence in this case. Um, so we're going to talk about Homo habilis. The progression is here and is it, uh, in uh, right timing. Then uh, after habilis, there is a rectus. Uh, then there is ne Neanderthaliensis and then there is sapiens. Okay, so we're going to talk about specifically these four species. So let's start with Homo habilis. Who's Homo habilis? Um, Homo habilis appeared about two million years ago and uh, probably evolved from an Australopithecus, okay? Um, and why do we call it Homo habilis? If you can see, oh, this is Homo habilis, is using stone um, uh, tools, okay? So it's starting to make tools. Brain um, size has in increased from Australopithecus. Uh, we are about at a half um, 
from Homo uh, half size than Homo sapiens here. Okay, of course, from now on, I don't have to tell you that um, there is bipedalism. Okay, you know that we talk about hominin either or bipedal. And um, uh, there are many, many tools that we have found near the fossils, and that's why we know, and we know these are shaped uh, stones, they're not just stones. So we know that this homo was able to, to make some stone tools. Um, as I told you, it appeared uh, about 2 million years ago, and they, um, um, the interesting thing is that in reality, we know that we may be wrong saying that Homo habilis is the first species to use uh, tools, to shape stones for tools, because um, there is some something weird that we have uh, discovered. We have discovered uh, fossil tools that date uh, to earlier than two million years uh, old. So about two and a half million years ago, there were some tools that uh, were already shaped, but uh, they were not, um, and this does not, con does not coincide with the age of the earlier, uh, earliest Homo habilis. So possibly there was another group, another species that was already using um, tools that we haven't found a fossil record of. So there is a question mark here. But for the evidence that we have, we have to say nowadays, um, the first Homo that we know of that used tools is Homo habilis. Okay, habilis, remember the word ability, uh, it's uh, to be able to do something. Habilis means like, um, in this case, um, that is able to utilize and uh, uh, shape tools. Um, all right, so Habilis um, uh, lived about half a million year. Uh, these are the areas, remember all these uh, fossils, all these hominid, hominid either all, uh, they were lived, uh, they all lived in Africa. They were all appear, um, arose and um, lived in Africa and they went extinct there as well. So Homo habilis, as I told you, is about as, as half of the size of the brain of a modern human, us, basically, while Australopithecus was a third. So we are increasing brain size here. Um, he went extinct in about half a million years. We don't know why all these Homo species uh, went extinct. There is still an unknown there, uh, including uh, some groups that were um, really, really close to us that we, we can hypothesize there, but we don't really know why all these uh, groups went extinct. Uh, we all know that we are the only species of Homo of the genus Homo that is uh, currently living. <coughs> Excuse me. So the next uh, uh, species was Homo erectus. And um, uh, of course here, the tool, um, the ability to make tools becomes, becomes more sophisticated. Erectus means upright, and this can be confusing. I don't know why this has been, um, actually I know why. This has been called Homo erectus because uh, this I think was discovered before uh, Abilis fossil was called erectus, which means upright, but in reality, they're all upright. So this just happens to be uh, called that way because it was discovered before habilis. But anyways, Homo erectus um, is more advanced than Homo habilis. It, appear, uh, it um, evolves later than Homo habilis, is uh, able to make very um, better tools, even just not made by, um, ma made with stones. Uh, and the one characteristic of Homo habilis, which you can't appreciate here because it's covert, is, um, oops, where do I have it? Here, this is a picture that is covert, uh, the ability to, uh, to put up a fire. Homo erectus discovered how to put up a fire, 
okay i just wanted to show you this picture so i'm gonna go back it's covered here there is a fire here so whenever you see a fire a picture with a fire this is homo erectus okay um so homo erectus was uh, pretty short and um still uh, kind of short and uh now it has a brain size uh, which is two-thirds of modern humans. So we go from one-third to a half to two-thirds, okay, here. Uh, prominent uh, uh, um, brow ridges here. This is what the um, skull if, uh, um, tells us. A rounded jaw, so it becomes a little bit more handsome, like right? similar to us, much more similar to us, probably still pretty hairy. Now, um, the one interesting thing is that uh, we know that, again, as I told you, even Homo uh, sapiens sapiens evolves in Africa first. And uh, here we see how, uh, because of fossil evidence that we have found, now there is a spread out. So Homo erectus are spreading out of Africa. And um, in um, Asia, for sure, maybe also Europe, but we're not sure uh, of that so in uh, areas that are still close to um to africa okay but it starts spreading out this is a very important characteristic because um as we will see the uh, following groups they spread out all over the place okay um um homo erectus um fossils have been dated to about couple of million year uh, ago so many times of course these uh, groups they overlap uh, it's not when you look at the sequence that we're talking about from homo habilis to homo erectus it's not that one one disappears and the other appear there's coexistence for some time okay and so there is overlap as you can uh, imagine and then the disappearance of one um, species in uh, the um, continuation of another, we're not sure why all these species uh, went extinct, sometimes pretty quickly. Homo erectus lived in small social groups, as shown here, uh, and uh, as told you, made um, more sophisticated tools, not just uh, stone, but also made with bone, uh, bones of animals lived in caves, and more importantly made fire so probably starting cooking the meat that was hunting and this again this is um another important characteristic because uh in in terms of disease uh spread um uh, now because raw meat can bring so much disease uh, now it's reduced and also uh, cooked meat is easier to digest and this uh, all goes with uh, a possibility of um, development of a bigger brain remember it all uh, is related um, okay homo erectus when you see this picture with a fire is homo erectus is the first one to understand and discover how to put up controlled fire uh, Homo erectus disappeared about 80,000 years ago. We're talking about thousands of years now. Okay, pretty close to our era now. Um, and this, um, and remember, we have because we have found the latest fossil of Homo erectus dated about 80,000 years ago in Asia. But in Africa, actually, it uh, had disappeared about half a million years ago already. Okay. So the um, groups that migrated out of Africa, they made it a little bit longer than the groups that first appeared in Africa, in other words. All right, so um, last group we're going to talk about, last species is Homo sapiens. Uh, sapiens means wise, wise men. The oldest fossils are about 500,000 years old. Um, these uh, ancient, archaic means ancient, Homo sapiens are very similar to us, to modern humans. They do have some difference. For instance, they have larger uh, teeth and they still have these prominent 
brow ridges, but don't you know some people that still have that, right? Some people still conserve this characteristic um, among us. Um, and um, so this may be another number that I'm going to ask you to remember about, okay? 500 years ago, there is this uh, Homo sapiens, first Homo sapiens that appeared. Just to give you an idea of the timing, okay? Are we talking about millions of years Homo sapiens or uh, half a million or what? Okay, so about half a million uh, year ago. That's when the first Homo sapiens appeared. Now, Homo sapiens has subspecies in it, okay? We are Homo sapiens sapiens. Before us, there was Homo sapiens the Italiensis, which went extinct. This is very, very similar to us. And actually, there is um, something interesting about Neanderthaliensis because it seems like this um, uh, Homo had a little bit of larger brain than Homo sapiens sapiens. Okay? And uh, Homo sapiens Neanderthaliensis. Ne uh, their taliensis uh, went extinct. Um, uh, we don't exactly uh, know uh, why, like um, for many other groups. Okay, so all this Neanderthaliensis was um, is dated to about 130,000 year uh, old. Um, very powerful body, massive skulls, very powerful. Uh, um, very, very powerful um, bodies. Neanderthaliensis, a very, very um, the, um, social life developed, uh, took care of its um, group and uh, even buried their dead, we think, even with some kind of ritual. Of course, I don't have to tell you, very sophisticated um, hunting techniques, very sophisticated tools made of any possible uh, material found around. And so, um, this is uh, somebody that is very, very similar to us. Um, by about 100,000 years ago, uh, sapi Homo sapiens neartheriensis had actually spread out all over the place throughout Europe, Asia, uh, and um, in the migration from Africa, where it had appeared, into Europe, to North Europe, where the climate condition and the sunlight availability was more scarce. There is a lot of there are lots of changes that happen in their deterrences. Uh, and especially if you can imagine the skin color may have been selected for a wider and wider skin color because of course um, here you have in Africa you have a lot of sunlight heating and um, uh, and, and dark skin protects against um, the UV radiation that's present in, in sunlight. Um, and um, with all that, uh, but, but it also, uh, so sunlight is important uh, to absorb uh, for human body because it uh, favors the um, um, bone formation. It's very important for vitamin D um, formation. So you need a lot. You need sunlight. You need you need a type of skin that color of skin that is um, related to the environment you're living. Um, if you live in an environment there is a lot of sunlight all day long, you need a dark skin to protect you against uh, the UV radiation. But you still have enough because you still have enough sunlight penetrating your body to fix vitamin D. Now, if you're migrating north where there is uh, the sunlight is scarce, uh, the population is going to be selected for a lighter skin. So basically the organisms that have too dark skin, uh, because of sunlight is so faint, they won't absorb enough of the sunlight because of their dark skin and they will die out. And uh, lighter and lighter skin color is going to be selected for. And that's why the people that live in North Europe have such light skin compared to people that live in Africa. Okay? That has been just a selection, but they were all born with very 
in uh, ancient time we were we all had very dark skin uh we we're born with dark skin okay because we we're born in africa okay so um Neander Neanderthal were gone by um, about 30,000 years ago, very recently. This is a very recent time, okay, in terms of geological time scale. Quite interesting history. Homo sapiens sapiens first appeared in Africa about, in Africa, it's always Africa. Remember, we already know this. We already talked about the fact that we were born in Africa and then we migrated out. So. All these groups, all these species that we're talking about first appeared in Africa and then moved out of Africa. And uh, they all went extinct except, except for Homo sapiens sapiens, okay, which is us. We appeared about 120,000 years ago. I know uh, that I've already asked you to remember a couple of numbers, but if you could remember this other number for me, that would be great. This is us, okay? When did we, when were we born? We were born 120 years, 120,000 years ago, okay? Of course, we made very beautiful stone tools or kind of tools from bones, from stones. Um, and by 30,000 years ago, Homo sapiens sapiens had spread out of Africa, uh, everywhere except for the Americas, actually. Um, and we know that from fossil evidence, but we have been able to do mitochondrial DNA analysis on these um, fossil remains. Um, I think we talked about mitochondrial DNA briefly, but just... Uh, very briefly, I want to tell you, mitochondrial DNA, which is the DNA found in the mitochondria in our cells, is a type of DNA that is very resistant to degradation. So many times we can look at mitochondrial DNA of fossils that are not so old, uh, like these ones, and uh, compare this mitochondrial DNA to modern um, humans to see how different we are to understand a lot about evolution remember there's a lot of history of evolution in our genes okay the molecular archive so homo sapiens sapiens arrived in europe about 35 year a thousand years ago and these are the early um, european homo sapiens sapiens they're called chromagnons because uh, this is the name of the French valley in, in which we have found a lot of fossil evidence of the existence of these early Homo sapiens sapiens in Europe. So the Cro-Magnons and um, Cro-Magnons use very beautiful stone tools um, shown here, some of them. Uh, they had very complex hunter uh, gatherer society. Uh, and most importantly, we found a lot of graphic representation, uh, pretty complex that we uh, that it has left uh, to us behind. So they used a lot of symbolic language. Okay. Uh, now um, I want to talk about the coexistence of uh, Homo sapiens and Homo um, in. Uh, uh, Homo sapiens sapiens and Homo sapiens neanderthaliensis. So um, we know that neanderthaliensis coexists with the Cro-Magnons, which are the early Homo sapiens sapiens. Okay, and uh, we we don't understand, we don't know why Homo sapiens neanderthaliensis went extinct. Okay, remember Homo sapiens neanderthaliensis is a little different from us. It's actually a larger brain and um, several anatomical characteristics. And make us de um, define them as a different um, subspecies. Now, they went extinct, they don't exist anymore, uh, but they did coexist, <coughs> excuse me, with the, um, the Homo sapiens sapiens, the Cro-Magnons, we call them, right? The Cro-Magnons that were in the French Valley. Um, living in that French valley that we talked about. Uh, that's why they've uh, been called Cro-Magnons. Now, there are several hypotheses that explain the disappearance of Neanderthal. And um, just uh, basically all the hypotheses you can think about. You don't even have to remember. What could have killed Neanderthaliensis? 
One hypothesis is hypothesis of interbreeding. Okay, of course, these are subspecies. So uh, for the definition of species that we talked about, um, really uh, this uh, Neanderthaliensis and Sapiens sapiens were probably able to interbreed and produce fertile offspring. If that is the case, you know that at some point there is going to be the, abs uh, the, the, two, the two subspecies are going to be reabsorbed in one. I really think this is a very plausible and, um, and uh, logical explanation of the reason why Neanderthaliensis went extinct. So just uh, uh, interbreeding, production of fertile offspring, and that brings to to uh, uh, evolution of this, to, to, to um, the fact that the two subspecies in this case are absorbed in one. Okay, these are really more groups than uh, species. They're not different species. Okay, Neanderthalians is not really a different species than sapiens, especially because it's able to interbreed and produce fertile offspring. That's the hypothesis. But there are other hypotheses. For instance, is it possible that um, Maybe Neanderthaliensis uh, was different enough to where uh, when Cro-Magnon uh, coexisted with it, introduced some kind of disease viruses to which Cro-Magnon was more resistant. That's possible. Okay, maybe disease, new viruses, we're talking about new viruses nowadays, um, brought by the Cro-Magnons, uh, brought uh, too much disease to Neanderthaliensis to where disappeared. Other hypothesis is um, maybe um, Cro-Magnons were better uh, at hunting and better um, at, at uh, competing with the resources, finding food, but I think this is also um, a little bit of um, shaky um, theory because we know that uh, Neanderthaliensis was very good hunter anyways, and I think there was enough food around. So, but that's another hypothesis, or all hypothesis, we don't know what is really true. Um, another hypothesis based on the different same migration patterns between Neanderthal and Cro-Magnon. Um, another one is that they were fighting with each other, so deliberately killed. Again, this is not very um, a recognized hypothesis possibly because we know that they were peace peacefully coexisting. We have too much evidence of that, so I really don't think that this hypothesis stands. But there are all kind of hypotheses out there. As I told you, you can even make up your own hypothesis at this point, and uh, there, there is, there is all of them out there. So um, and. Um, Recent research has also been able to compare the DNA of Neanderthal to modern human. Remember, we talked about we talked about mitochondrial DNA, and uh, some of these uh, studies um, help eliminate some of these hypotheses. Okay, so <coughs> to conclude, sorry, we talked about this progression. Um, <clears throat> this is a very simplistic progression. There is much more to it. Uh, it's a progression that was recognized some time ago, uh, and it, which only recognized two genera, the Australopithecus and the Homo. We know that other three genera have been added so far. Um, and um, the one thing I'm, I'm not going to talk about too much is about the... Um, speech and ability to um, produce language. Uh, I think it is in your uh, book or in your study guide, but I'm, I have shortened a little bit this presentation. This is something that if you take, a, um, I guess, a psychology class, you may, you may encounter. So um, that's why I left it out. But um, so we know that, of course, Homo sapiens sapiens and um, Neanderthaliensis for sure had ability to speak. Um, we are not sure about the other groups. Anyways, uh, remember that um, Australopithecus is not the only other genus. It is um, of hominin, hominin, uh, Here it says hominid. That's not 
incorrect because omini nai are included in omini da. Omini da is the larger group that includes also the great apes. Um, but we know this more precisely is a group of omini nai. Okay, that includes five genera. There are only two genera included here: Australopithecus and Homo. We have talked about all these species and there are slight differences. Remember the progression in the uh, size of the brain that okay, becomes bigger, always related to the body size, of course. Remember erectus, you always find that it has some fire next to it because it's the first one to use fire. And um, when did Homo sapiens sapiens appear? About 120 thousand years ago this is one number that i'm asking you to remember okay this is an important number um and um we talk about this uh, all this uh, history here the first australopithecus uh, lived about four million years ago so we talk about millions of years of evolution here about four millions of your soul evolution with all these species appearing in, in this progression shown here but also overlapping with one another okay homo erectus overlapped with habilis and habilis went extinct and so on okay and then we talked about the coexistence of neanderthalensis and sapiens probably also interbreeding which likely um likely uh, brought to the um the fact that the two subspecies these are really subspecies when absorbed in one uh, or there are other hypotheses out there right, such as disease or killing each other or uh, better competition for food things like that but we don't really know the answer there okay all right so um to conclude this is the advanced uh, advance of humans remember we were born in africa we were born with a very dark skin and in our migration our skin became lighter and lighter why because of natural selection all what we have talked about in this course uh, definitely all, always boils down to the concept of natural selection the environment the sunlight availability has brought to changes in a population okay this is the same species okay about 40,000 uh, years uh, ago uh, homo sapiens sapiens had already arrived in um, europe north europe as well and here is the migration pattern so first areas were it arrived there more closer to uh, the areas and closer to Africa um, and in the Mediterranean and uh, also in Asia and then eventually in uh, North uh, Europe okay and uh, just very recently okay and more recently uh, in um, Americas okay so there's a younger homo sapiens sapiens that arrived in America all right, so I'm uh, going to stop here and this was the last presentation a few things that I'm asking you to remember about uh, our own uh, history okay the last um, effort you have to make to remember these things and many of them probably already have heard about all right so um, uh, I want to talk maybe about the test for a second um i already sent out an email about the test we're probably going to change the test date um uh, shifted uh the next day or two days later so we're talking about either the 15th or the 16th of may upon request because you guys have several tests the same day understand that now regarding the test time um i cannot change it we uh, it's it's a it's a time that we're trying to to be fair to all our classes all our student um uh, believe me there are statistics out there that show that it doesn't take more than a minute to answer a um, multiple choice question given the fact that of course you know the answer 
If you don't know the answer, you don't know the answer. It will take uh, three days for you to answer, or it can take, I mean, you. I guess you will have to guess. I don't know. Hopefully, you know most of the answers. Uh, but um, the thing is that uh, this is the type of test that I always give um, in my finals. And when you come to class, you have an hour and 20 minutes of class. And that's the time in which you take this kind of test. So if you will, now you have extra time because when you come to class, we have to prepare. We have to put our backpacks away. I have to um, um, distribute all the testing and there is somebody that doesn't have the um, scan drone and this and that. So we, we waste at least 10 minutes uh, in all of this when we take a test in class. So it boils down that less time. So I wanted to reassure uh, those of you that are saying that there is not enough time. Actually, there is more than enough time. The thing is that because you are no, you know that there is this many questions and this much time. Now, I guess your brain is playing a trick on you that you think that there is not enough time. There is more than enough time when you come to class and you don't uh, really know how many questions are going to be in the test. You just start your test, take your test, and you finish in a little bit less than half of the time. So um, a little bit more than half of the time, sorry. So uh, don't uh, uh, you don't have to worry. We know that there is enough time. We wouldn't be otherwise giving this much time for a test. This is the time that all other students are given, a minute per question. Uh, actually, they say 45 seconds is already enough, and so I'm giving a minute. This is the time that other colleagues are giving for other students that are taking all other courses at ACC. So we cannot treat students differently. It will not be fair. It's, again, not to be mean to you. Don't take it personally. We, um, we try to uh, establish very standard um conditions and very standard and standardize everything across the college okay and uh, you are uh, in high school student i understand that but in my point of view you are a college student the fact that you are enro enrolled in high school does not uh, mean that you have to be treated differently this is very clear this has to be very clear you are a college student okay a hundred percent and you cannot be treated in a different way than other college students this is a requirement for from SACS, which is the accrediting co um, agency that gives us accreditation so we cannot treat these um classrooms of high school students in a different way or we get in big trouble okay so the time that you're given is enough is equal to other the time that other students are given and don't stress about it you just sit down with your computer take the test at your answer at your best and you will be fine okay guys i am going to stop here and i really wish you um Good luck for your future. Also wanted to tell you guys, uh, this uh, semester, I was very happy uh, with Elgin uh, High School. Actually, I have to email Mr. Oris. I think you guys did, uh, were doing pretty well. Um, I was very happy with this group of students, um, pretty mature, uh, motivated, very good students. Okay, I'm really proud of uh, this group. And I know you guys are going to do well. Okay. So I hope you I see you sometimes in the future. Thank you.